All right, guys, Andrew here with Funnel Boom. Today, we're going to take a look at a new feature that Google Tag Manager recently introduced and makes life a lot easier when you have situations where you need to initialize a tag on a page and then you need to fire a subsequent event after the initialization of the base event. So a good example of this would be like our Facebook tags when we have a, we need to fire like the base tag, our, our base Facebook custom audience tag, and then we need to fire like a purchase event on top of that. So what we're looking at here is a tag inside of Google Tag Manager, right? And I, this is my Facebook purchase event that, that I've set up. Now, in the past, you, you might have used a, a data layer trick that I highlighted before to trigger this, this uh, second tag fire for Facebook. But let's, let's take a look real quick before I get into to, to that uh, at how this works. So when you set up your new tag, right? So I just did uh, custom HTML. I added my, um, my code here in the HTML box. And I'm just going to go down to, you'll see there's a new box, tag firing options and tag sequencing, right? So tag firing options, uh, in this case, uh, I actually haven't really looked too far into this yet. Um, I usually just do once per event and, and that seems to work fine. Um, now I think that that really comes into play if it's a, uh, if it's like a button click or you're firing on button click and you only want to do it once per page. Uh, but I haven't really had to use it too much. But really what we're looking at here is this new thing called tag sequencing, okay? And so this is what gives us this capability to say, be sure that this base tag fires before my event fires, right? So I've checked fire a tag before my purchase event fires. And then in the drop down, I choose my Facebook custom audience base tag. And then I checked don't fire this purchase event if the, the base tag fails. Now, for Facebook, I mean, it wouldn't cause too big of an issue if you left this box unchecked, but I might as well check it. Um, so this is under the, uh, again, under the configure tag settings for your tag. So come in here, set this up. Um, now, if you, my, my one of my concerns about using this method was, well, what if I already have my base tag set to fire on all pages, and then I tell it, to fire here before my event would would the base tag fire twice but what what i've tested and found out is that's not the case and in fact if we go over to the base tag as you now see underneath our fire on or like our, our trigger settings here it's got this new little section that says your tag will fire right before these tags and here you see like a lot of my lead event and event tags that i use this function for so this is a lot cleaner, a lot better way uh, to, to trigger these uh, event fires. Um, uh, you can see here, this is the old method we were using, like that I was talking about earlier, where we were using this little data layer trick to push an event into the data layer. So we would pass this event FB loaded into the data layer and then use that event as the triggering mechanism for the purchase event fire. Um, and if, if you haven't seen the, my videos on the Facebook pixel implementation or, or downloaded that guide, this probably all sounds like a bunch of gibberish, but uh, just know that this new functionality uh, does in fact work. Uh, and, and even, you know, this, this data layer, you know, you can still use this. If you're using it today and you don't feel like ripping out what you have and, and replacing it with the new functionality, um, you know, this data layer thing will still work, but if you're starting from scratch and or you want something that's a little more straightforward and uh, doesn't cause you to have a headache every time you think about it. Uh, you might want to consider uh, using this new feature. Um, so yeah, hopefully that makes life easier on you with these purchase events. Um, what I've done is tested this too. Uh, so I went to a confirmation page where I knew I had both the uh, uh, the the base tag firing and I had the purchase event to be sure I wasn't duplicating my calls on my events. So here in my network tab, you see I have like a lot of Facebook, I've, I've filtered for Facebook here, and I have a lot of requests, but some of them are like, you know, their, their logo. And then you've got three redirects down here, so we can ignore these redirects. But I, I'm looking here and I see, okay, I see my purchase event. I see my, uh, this is a custom, an old custom tracking pixel, which by the way, guys, you can use the custom tracking pixel and the custom audience pixel on the same page. It's not gonna cause any problems. That was a, 
a question I got, uh, you know, from someone who is still using some of the le the, the old conversion tracking pixels. And uh, in fact, there are some situations where you might be better served to use the old conversion tracking. And I'll, I'll do another video on that soon, probably. But um, at, at any rate, we get, so we have my page view, my conversion tracking, and my purchase event. All right, you don't see duplicate page view. That's what that's the key. I don't want to see duplicates of that because sometimes that can cause errors and issues uh, with with the data collection process for Facebook. So I've tested this; it looks great. Um, I, you know, I would suggest using it if uh, if you're using Google Tag Manager to implement your Facebook tags. Hopefully, this is helpful. Um, you know, if you don't see it, this tag sequencing for some reason in your um, in your interface, maybe they'll roll it out to you soon. I think it should be pretty widely distributed by now, but um, you know, keep in mind we're doing fire a tag before on the purchase event tag, not vice versa, because think about it this way. We don't want to fire a tag every time the base fires, right? I wouldn't want to fire my purchase tag every single time that the base pixel loads. I want to use it the other way around. Go into your event tag and fire it, um, uh, and set it to fire the base pixel before. Um, so hopefully that's helpful. If you guys have any questions, let me know. I need to update my videos in the uh, implementation guide at some point, and hopefully I'll get around to that soon. But uh, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Hope everybody's doing well, and thanks again for tuning in.